My name is Yuri Kostop from Maus. And today we're at the last week of the season, week 12, GT3s at Le Mans. Going to be a really fun week to race, I think. Going to be interesting to, to see how the slipstream works with the new uh, downforce cars. And uh, always tricky with the slowdowns. Always tricky with some lines around Le Mans. A lot of time to find. If you dare to get close to the limit, let's see where those limits are in the track height. All right, so here we are, start of the lap. And as we're all used to at Le Mans, it's all about getting as close to the slowdowns as you can without getting the actual slowdowns. So that's what we'll focus on in this lap. Going to push four chicanes here. You can open those up. Running on the pit entry a bit. You can jump over them quite a lot with the Ferrari. Good turn one coming up. And we want to open it up all the way on the right. As long as on the apex we're not completely over the curve, it's allowed. Touch the rouge here as well. You can run quite wide on the exit. We want to run on the crown of the road on the back straight. It gives you a tiny bit extra speed if you do this in GT cars. Bring it all the way over to the left side. And open up the corner for a good exit. And in these chicanes on the first two apexes. So for the next chicane there's the left hander and the right hander. You want to make sure that you've got one tire on the track. So not on the curb at all times. On the last one it's a bit different. You can run wider as long as you get back at the right point. So look at the hundred. So as you can see, we can run quite far over that curve as long as we know where to get back onto the track. Well sand corner, important to set the car for a good exit here. And again, we run on the crown of the road. And the net was coming up. Important to keep the speed up, but also to, on the left hander to make sure we got a nice entry from the right side. So keep it tight here. Got a nice entry. Bring it all the way over to the left side here. Voilage. And the Ferrari doesn't mind going over that curve completely. And we got the high speed Porsche curve section coming up. And on the two left handers, you can use the inside grass for a bit of rotation. So not too wide on the entry here. Tight. Set the car for a good exit out of the Porsche curves. And then the only thing left is to go through the Porsche chicanes. Open up the corner here. Make sure to get a good run out of here as well. And that's the lap around Le Mans and the Ferrari GT3. So here we are, start of the lap. Going to turn one, and turn one, you want to make sure that 
You're running all the way on the left here and try to open up the corner as much as possible so that you've got a good entry into the chicane. So you want to be running close to the gravel here. You don't want to be all the way over the curb here on the inside. There is still a slowdown on the apex. But after you've done the apex, you can run all the way to the right side here, close to the grass. And if you do that, we run over the curb, so we kind of off the white, like outside of the white lines. But there's no slowdown, slow down, there's no off track, so we're allowed to do this. And that makes sure that we get a good entry into the, uh, the first chicane. For the first apex, you want to get as close to this inside bit of gravel as you can. As a reference with most cars, some cars are a bit narrow, some cars are a bit wider. Some cars will allow you to just about clip that, but it's a good visual reference to get close to this, this gravel to where the, the slowdown is. You want to get as close to that as you can and try to sacrifice the first left hander a bit for a good exit on the second right hander. A good reference here is quite hard to see when you're in the car, but the left side tires are not allowed to cross this white line. That's what the slowdown is in this one. It's not as important to cut this this much because again we sacrifice the first left hander that makes uh, it makes sure that you get a good exit from the right hander and we want to run wide on the exit more than clip this again like the inside apex as much as we can. And for the exit here, these bullets here is where the slowdown goes wider. So the slowdown for the middle of the car is at this this bullet thing. And it runs in a straight line, and then it runs a bit to the outside, to this bullet thing, and you can run wider after these two. So what I like to do is aim with my left tires for these bollards, and clip these with my left tires. Like this. That way, you're inside to slow down all the time. And it's just easy, flat out kings here. Want to make sure that, we're, again, as close to the right side here as we can. Break in a straight line, try to keep the speed up. And make sure that around halfway of the corner there you can be flat out. Then we got Texture Rouge, fourth gear, tap on the brakes and make sure that you keep the speed up and then throttle really early. And you can run a lot wider here than I did even. You can run all the way on this runoff as long as the middle of your car is back on the right side of this point of the curb here with the curb ends. So you can run a bit wider if you want. Keep a bit more speed up in the corner as long as the middle of the car hits this point or on the inside. If you don't, you get a slowdown. And lap 1, you'll see a lot of people getting a slowdown there because the car tends to still understeer. You start in the last sector and the car understeers, so especially in dirty air. And if you get a slowdown, it's going to be very costly on the straight here. But the first straight, we want to run on the crown of the road. It gives you maybe a couple extra hundreds, but around the whole lap, it keeps adding up. Want to bring the car to the left side here, and I try to break just behind this barrier here before the 100, around where this starts here. There's not a real good point here where we can start breaking, but between where the barrier ends and the 100. And then this first cone here is as a reference. You just about want to hit this with the left side of the car. That's when you know you've got a good line into the corner. You don't want to look at this cone, you want to look at the apex, but if your car kind of clips this left cone here or gets close to it, you've got a good line into the corner. For the right hander here, make sure that your left side of the car, so left tires, don't clip this curb too much, that's a slowdown. Same for this one here. The right side of your tires can't clip the curb too much. We can be on the inside of the white line here without getting a slowdown, as long as the right side tires aren't on this curb too much. Same here on the exit, but on the exit, we can run as wide as we can. We can run to this wall as long as you are back somewhere in the middle of this curb here. And there's no real visual reference that I know of that tells you where exactly you need to be back on the track of the middle of your car. So what I do is the first part of the curb, I can run over a bit, but try to make sure that I get back to the track as soon as I can from this point. So from this point here, we're running all the way on the inside of the white line. It's fine, there's no slaughter as long as you're back before the middle of the scrub somewhere. Again, crown of the road. And then we get to what I would say that's the most surprising track limits on the second chicane here. Um, the braking here is the same as, as the first chicane. You want to break just before the 100, a bit later this time. You want to make sure that you almost clip this cone here and look at the apex. So again, we're clipping the cone, look at the apex, and you want to make sure that you open up the right hand of a good exit, so slow the car down on the left side here. 
angle the car from the middle of the track so you're not completely to the right side. And then we get to the point here where we're running completely off the road. We're running on the inside of the curb here, but as long as you get back before a certain point, this is not a slowdown, it's not an off track, it's a legal lap. And the point where you can get back on track is fairly specific. You can see there's a bit of a uh, curb here that sticks out more than the other bit. So it's a bit lower here. The curb sticks up more here and it's a bit lower again. And then it goes higher again. What I try to do is have this in the middle of my car. So my right tires go here, the left tires go here, and I go off the road, off the, the curb like this. So if there's this bit here in the middle of the car, if you do that, there's a reference there. You can go over that. And this will not be a slowdown. And it will make sure that you exit the corner much quicker than you would if you stay within the white lines. So these are just things you need to know. Need to either learn by, by doing or need to know by watching a nice video like this one. Got Milsan Corner. Milsan Corner is quite tricky because we can't really break in a straight line. We want to make sure to open up the corner as much as we can so that we're breaking as much in a straight line as we can. If we break in a straight line, we can break harder without locking the tires or going to ABS. Bring the car to the left side as much as you can and then set the car for a good exit of the corner. I try to be close to these bollards here. If you clip the bollards, it can also be slowed down. And then you can get as close to the gravel here as you can. Uh, I think even clipping the gravel a bit gives you a 1x, not a slowdown, so you don't get punished that much here. Again, crown of the road. Then another tricky section at Indianapolis. You can't be very far on the left side here. Uh, if you go too far on this green bit here, you get an off track. Not a slowdown, but an off track. I think it's the middle of the car. It needs to be in the middle of this white dotted line. Small break, and you want to make sure that you don't exit the, the right at king too wide. To make sure that you get close to this curb or clip this curb as a nice entry for the left hander. And we can run a bit wide on the exit here. If you run too wide here again, you get an off track, not a slowdown. And then for an ash, some cars will not like driving over this curb. The Ferrari takes the curb very well. You can break all the way on the left side just before the 50. Keep it second gear and run over this curb to make sure you open up the, the 90 degree right hand over Nash as much as you can for a good exit. And here you don't really need to run on the ground on the road, it's too far around and the road isn't as uh, pointy as it is on the back straight. And we got Porsche cars, one click, shift down. And again, just as the same when the intro is in Indianapolis, you don't want to be over this uh, left green bit too much. Middle of the car on the, this dotted line, I think. Small break, you want to follow this inside curb here, so you want to come from the outside. Once the curb starts, you want to follow this. Run a bit wide afterwards, and then you can even run two tires on the grass here to get a bit of rotation in the car. In some cars, if your car understeers, running two tires quite far onto this grass here will not give you an off track, not a slowdown, and it helps the rotation of the car. You get close to it as well as you can, and then low inputs through the Porsche curves. Make sure the car keeps rotating. Follow the white line as much as you can, and you always want to be as close to the grass here as you can to open up the next left hander for a good exit. Come all the way to the inside, and you always want to be close to the slowdown here. And the slowdown is the middle of the car at the edge of this curb here, where this ends. If you feel like you're going wide, you can use all of this runoff as long as the middle of the car is back at this point here. And then all we have left is the four chicanes. We can open those up on the pit entry here. So you want to use that, go a bit wide on the pit entry to get a nice run to the first four chicane. And you want to be as close as you can with your right side tires or the inside tires to this curb. If you clip the curb a tiny bit, it's fine. If you clip it more than just a tiny bit, you will get a slowdown. And the slowdown is very costly because you can't serve it before the last again. So as you can see, the inside tires as close to the curb as you can. And then for the last again, you want to make sure to sacrifice the left hander quite a lot. Jump over it quite a lot. And the right hander. Open it up a bit, again here, 
You don't have to stay with the uh, tires within the right lines. You can run over this right side curb quite a lot. The limitation here is not as much a slowdown as it is if you run too much over the curb, you land against this, this big red anti sausage curb and that bounces the car up again. So that's the limitation you have in the last again. That's what you want to avoid. You kind of want to land at the end of this again. And if you do that, you get a good exit and start the next lap and try to avoid the slowdowns for the next lap again. All right, that was the track guide around Le Mans. I hope you guys learned something. Good luck in your races. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel.